Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. For me, absolutely. Two of my favoriteest people in the world is Derek Mueller here from Veritasium, who I, I now have issues with in every area because he's starting to talk about Higgs and about light accelerating electricity. This is my realm, and I need to talk to him about this. We're going to show he's talking about how much you weigh in grams and the Higgs boson, all this. However, there's another one. Here's the other one. Okay, this is exactly, exactly what they do at CERN and Fermilab and all of the big particle colliders. They smash particles together, only they start with big pieces of particles, which are called, you know, they're stable particles like this. Only they think they're just one big particle. No. And they call them protons and neutrons, not that way. They are nothing more than a whole batch of these little particles. And CERN and Fermilab have seen them. They say, yes, these are the smallest particles that exist. The fixed particle, which is the black one, never changes, I agree. And the white one, which can go big and small and squirt through. And we squirted them through and separated them. All right, just think about this now. This is light. And the reason there's two of them back to back is because it bounces off you and creates light. If there was just one of these black and whites together, that's an electron. It will burn into you. It's static electricity, lightning, electrical current. It's, it's an electron flowing towards a place that it bonds with. All right? And that's what sucks it in. And here's what we just did. We did all of that. We took that particle, and the only reason we can see it is because we accelerated it through a venturi. And here you can't see, you wouldn't even see it here hardly. You might be able to see something, glowy little something, but you're not going to see this. This is the stretched field, and there's a field that surrounds these particles because they're magnetic. They're dipoles. And all of a sudden it gets sucked right out of there through this venturi, and here's what it created, exactly what CERN and Fermilab claim, and I agree, a muon neutrino, the black ball, separated from the electron neutrino, which was the white ball, and now is a shower. These two were together. Now they turn into a, a sterile muon all by itself, no longer part of the true neutrino pair, and the electron goes on its way as a shower. And the reason we can do this all day long is we have this in a funnel, and it just squirts out of here. You just keep, continue doing this all day long for the rest of your life if you want, which it, it, what they're talking about is the amount of energy that this should produce, and it looks like it to me. They claim it's over 200 times more energy than what you started with. And I'm going to let James, I think it's Orville, something like that, explain this. All right, this is from the Action Lab channel, and James Orgill is presenting this. And originally he claims that E equals mc squared was written like this. The change in mass equals the change in energy over the speed of light squared. Now, it still really doesn't make sense, but I can show you that mass absolutely changes depending upon how fast the particle's going and what it hits. So there's a density factor over here of what it impacts with. You're starting out with something and you can change its value by how hard it hits something. It's just like you got a hammer in your hand, it weighs a pound. You smack something hard enough, it weighs 500 pounds. Simple as that. All right, I showed you what mass is. It's those white and black particles together. If you destroy those, you create energy. He's exactly right. Listen to what he says. Is the relationship between mass and energy if you destroy mass, that means you create energy. If you destroy energy, you create mass. So that means if you input energy into a system, it actually contains more mass. And if you lose energy from a system, it actually contains less mass. For example... All right, I'm just going to tell you what mass is. It is literally electrons. So if you have a ball of electrons... Hold on a second. similar to what he's showing. He's showing a ball of protons and neutrons is uranium-235. And they're shooting in, apparently, a proton to smash this. 
And what it does is it splits this particle apart, because it's not really stable, because there's just too many pieces together, way up on the periodic chart. So they, they really don't want to be all that hard held together. So when you bang them, you can create radioactivity, which is breaking down these particles. And a part of this breaking down, will, it will give off some free protons or neutrons. I'm not sure what they're actually saying here. Let's listen to what he has to say. Okay, so here he comes again. Here we go. We're going to break apart a particle. Energy from a system, it actually contains less mass. For example, when a uranium atom decays, if you were to take those pieces of uranium atom and weigh them and see how much mass they have, you'd see that they actually have a little bit less mass than they did when they were just closer together. Now, it took a long time for scientists to notice this small change because it takes a lot of energy to create a little bit of mass, or it takes a little bit of mass to create a lot of energy. In fact, if you wonder how much mass it would take to run everything you need for your entire life and use all the energy you need for the rest of your life, it would only take about this much mass. And speaking of energy, I'd like to... Now, that, I, I have no idea how they came up with that, but I can tell you what. We can get mass in buckets full because we can split the particles. That's what mass is, is splitting the particles and creating an extremely heavy particle. That's what mass is to thank the sponsor for this video, EcoFlow. Eco okay, EcoFlow, that's fine. And he did a good job, and I appreciate being able to display what they have to say, because uh, th this is the only way I can present electron flood theory, and I have presented it so many times, and I'm not going to stop until it gets at least spoken about by these same people that are t saying, here's what you have to believe. Now, let's go and look at um, Veritasium, because he's also got a slant on things, which is also wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just the fact that, you know, if I can, if we could talk and I'm wrong, that's fine. But I don't think so. I'm showing the particles, not making up assumptions or thinking ahead of the thing. And I know that the Bohr model's wrong. Everybody knows it's wrong. But what do you replace it with? Boom, right there.